in this video I'll continue this about urban um, surface water flow and I'll look at one of the first steps you can have to consider namely the thing about filling uh, depressions so in um, the previous video where I talked about the whole design on discussion of how to go through um, with the, this process of modeling water flows um, I talked about different approaches to filling and you can fill them completely or you can fill small ones or you can fill only partly up um, so you just fill the sinks or the depressions with 30 centimeters of water I say that is how much water that we will have um, these different approaches um, can be used. I'll just demonstrate um, some of them and how they are done in QGIS. Mm -hmm. If we jump over to QGIS, and here I have a um, digital train model. We can see there's clearly some uh, depressions in it. There's these two lakes. These lakes they lead out of our map area here. So if I want to do a fill, which normally would be my preference to say, Okay, I'll only fill the pressions with up to, let's say, 30 centimeters of water, um, depending on which type of rain incident I will be simulating. I'll use this. They're all called sink something or other. So, sink removal. So, sink removal, I'll run it on my DTM. I'll say I'll fill my sinks, and I'll only fill them with 0.5 three meters okay so this one does take some time so i'll just uh, run it and i'll i'll pause the video and return when it's run so after some long in this case uh 293 seconds um felt much longer um it has finished doing the calculation and has created a um a new fill surface to me I'll just close this one. It gives me a warning. Don't have to worry about this warning. It's just that um, Sega could it creates a diaper format uh, image that can't be loaded into QGIS and uh, we therefore um, have to convert it and it's done automatically. So we have the layer here and immediately we see there's some strange things going on in this lake we are a bit worried about. But I won't cl look closer into the before I've done another type of fill. So um, remember that we had this that could fill just part of it. I just need to do a full sink. So I just completely remove the sinks. Normally when I do that, I use this fill sink XXL by Wang and Lee. Um, and here I have to be really careful that I use the quite correct layer, the DTM. And I'll run this one. Maybe I should before doing that. Maybe it would be good if I called took my output layer here because call this one uh rename it. So this was a uh, fill sink. Sink remove. So um now I can run my fill sink routine on my DTM. And this is luckily much quicker. So um, this tool has now run. And um, I can close it. And you see, yeah, I don't have this strange phenomena in the lake. So, but I would like to evaluate these. Um, so this was my unnamed fill sink. Um, the, the, there's one really useful way of evaluating that's simply just by subtracting our created our fill layer with our um, original layer, so calculating the difference. This is also called a blue spot map. So um, we can do that. And um, what we will do is that we will um, use our raster calculator.
but we have our raster calculator and we will take oh, let's do it on my one where I've used my fill sync. So fill DTM, that must be that one. Um, and I'll just subtract my DTM from it. Set my output constructor to be the DTM. DTM the DTM. Like that. And um, run this. So once this is finished, I have this layer. Maybe you can see that we have, um, maybe I should rename it. I'll just rename this uh, blue spot. That's blue spot. Um, so where we have these white areas is where we have the highest fill so in the case of uh, having a rainwater incident this is where the water will be the deepest um and this is what in general is called a blue spot max it is filled up to the limit um and therefore we might give it another way of visualization first of all i might just load a background image so i have a map that now drag it underneath my blue spot um and then i'll take my blue spot then we can talk about visualization here so if we uh, give it some properties where we say this is going to be a soda color so a single band soda color and these blues will be a nice color to use but i want to make it transparent where it's as low values then want it to be light blue only also wanted to do be transparent so I'll just do some editing to it. So I'll edit the color ramp. And here I can, if I add this opacity, um, so I, now opacity is zero down here. And do something like this. Um, so in the low values, I have a high, a low, opacity which will mean that the layer will be transparent so let's see what something like this looks like so here we see a map where we have these blue areas where we have some form of filling so this is where the water will, will collect in a situation of a severe rain incident if water is not led away in the sewers and so on so um, another approach to doing this uh, testing would be to use a plugin. So if you um, go to a plugin and use this, look for this profile tool, profile, this one. I have already installed it. I'll just um, be there. And you'll get this green little thing. So the profile tool, um, if I get rid, put that one down, um, it can be used to draw profile. So let's say, I was a bit wondering what happened with my one around this lake. So I'll just draw a profile along this lake here. So this is my profile. And then I will add some layers. So I'll look what was the original DTM. I'll add that. So here, of course, we can see where we go over the bridge and so on. And now we have the lake. And there's a little edge on the lake. There, but it's still relatively flat. If I now add my fill sink, so choose that one and say add. Um, so this is the sink one, just make it green. So this bit peculiar, why does it do this? This is this first remember what we saw when we looked at it. Uh, if I get rid of the blue spot and the so this um, so this does a really large fill out here, which is a bit strange, um, but a nice smooth one. If I look at my um, depression one, where this fills up with only thirty centimeters, 
So I'll take this one. Um, this is even more peculiar what's going on in this layer. So this one had a limit of only filling of 30 centimeters filled gigantically. Um, so it, it, it's gone completely wrong in the, in the lake. So this is, uh, this layer here that has you really steep thing, while the one where we just filled it does make a smooth gradient across the lake. Um, if we look in, um, make a profile in here instead, you can see that yeah, they, as long as it's going down here, it's flowing out fine. Um, here I just get rid of it. Go up there, sir. Um, so here we have the nice flow of it. And we have the deep depression there. And leading out here. This red line is not there. It's just the program being silly. Um, so um, it's always really important to check your fills because um, they often, mm, there can be problems in them. Um, this is probably one of those situations where I would consider choosing um, another software like ArcGIS Pro where this type of situation normally doesn't occur. There can be other problems, but um, or there's also our software packages where you can look at first. This, and it is something specific with this data set. Um, other times it works fine. It's um, it they they're not really geared for urban environments. I think that must be the conclusion on this. So um, what we basically have done now is that we have handled the first step. We looked at fields. We have um, done the evaluation of them and um, found that okay, our where we filled it completely was okay. We could generate a nice blue spot map, um, which was really useful um, to tell us where we have our depressions and what's going on. So that was okay. We had some more severe problems over the one where we had a limiter on it. So, but that was the first step. The next step, I'll look more about which of these different surfaces we really want to use. So um, hopefully see you in the next video.